Imagine serving life in prison and not knowing until it's too late. You might find it hard to believe that in Washington State, a life sentence is almost as common as a traffic ticket. My name is Christopher Jack Reed, and I'm also known as Jack Venice in several adult movies and websites. I'm 28 years old and working on my third year in prison. I'm actually serving a life sentence with a minimum release date of February 2017. A Whitman County jury trial in 2008 landed me a wrongful conviction for second degree rape, first degree burglary, and two counts of residential burglary. Now these charges are very serious, so I will expect the worst and assume that anyone hearing this feels I must be guilty and a horrible person. I personally know those two things to be untrue, and more importantly, so does the large group of family and friends who support me. Thank you, Mom, Dad, and Sherry. Thank you to all my friends and everyone out there who has my back. I may be far away, but your love is strong, and I have felt it every waking moment. My parents have recently had help from friends in organizing a letter explaining the huge bundle of inconsistencies in my case from A to Z. The victim in my case only accused me of being present while her assailant touched her inappropriately according to her original audio recorded police statements. This letter I have mentioned that my parents have put together will show how my case went from that to me serving life in prison. A copy of the letter will soon be sent out in email format to a lot of people. Now that I have said who I am and what I am going through, I really want to explain the issues that I have learned about that are much larger than me and my case alone. I'm talking about corruption that should be mind-blowing and quite frankly, it's probably going to be unbelievable at first. Certain sex offenders in Washington State are sentenced under the Indeterminate Sentence Review Board. I will show the websites that explain the policies in detail, but for my purposes, I will just say that certain offenders that committed a sex offense or a sexually motivated offense after August 31st of 2001 are Community Custody Board offenders, also known as the CCB Board, and is subject to sentencing under the ISRB. Thousands of Washington State offenders are in this category, and most have no idea what it actually means. The most important thing they should know is that they are serving a life sentence. Most of these offenders took plea deals. I have one simple question for you. Who in their right mind would take a plea deal for life? I'll say it again. Who would take a plea deal for life? Why would anyone do that? It makes no sense at all. I did not take a plea deal, but I was offered one for nine months in a county jail. Had I been told I would serve life with a guilty verdict, I would never have gone to trial. I would have pled guilty to the most horrific crime you can fathom. As I said before, this is way bigger than just me and my case. As I have met one guy after another in prison, I have often heard the same old song, and I've heard it hundreds of times now. They all learned of this ISRB thing when it was far too late. DOC staff members will tell you all about it. I will share with you a brief story I've heard from counselors at three different prisons. Offender John Doe asks his counselor when he can sign up for the work camps that are available for most of the prisoners when they are four years short of being released from prison. The counselor enters John Doe's name into a computer and then says, No, John, you have a max date of life and cannot go to camp. John says, No, sir or ma'am, I took the plea deal for six years, so you must be mistaking me for somebody else. Type my name back in there. The counselor shows John the computer, and John starts to cry, actually cry when he realizes what's going on. Please don't think for a minute that I am against the Indeterminate Sentence Review Board. If that is what helps Washington citizens sleep at night and feel safe, then so be it. They are sneaking life sentences in there like it's some kind of a game. I'm all for the idea that people should serve time, hard time, for committing crimes. That's exactly what needs to happen to those who are behind this corruption. They need to go to prison. The problem 
that I have mentioned to you is that people in Washington state are serving life sentences and they didn't know they were even facing life sentences. There are two things that I need to happen to solve this problem. The first one is that a law needs to be passed to force prosecutors, public defenders, judges, and defense attorneys to explain in detail the rules and policies of the ISRB. It should be on record, just like when they explain the death penalty to someone who's facing death. I will suggest that maybe they should make an online video that would be required by law to show to anyone who is facing the charges that would result in an ISRB sentence. The video should be shown at arraignment instead of at sentencing. The second part of the solution is to right all of those like myself who have been wronged. The state should be forced by the federal government to take us all back to the trial court and give us the chance to plead to a sentence without the ISRB. This can be done. We need our family members and friends to fight for it. I realize it sounds crazy to ask the public to help fix something that affects people most considered to be bad people. I ask that you open your minds up a little more and you will see this is wrong. If you allow this, what's next? This corruption technically happened to innocent tax-paying citizens because it happened to people before we were convicted. I also want to point out something, in, some interesting facts. The policy regarding the ISRB never uses the word life. Look through it for yourself. www.usb uh, or uh, I'm sorry, www.srb.com. Look through the policy. They instead hide behind the two words maximum term. That proves hidden agenda. Why wouldn't it be in the policy? The ISRB is not part of the DOC, the Department of Corrections. They are a separate government agency located in Olympia, Washington. There's four board members that are appointed by the governor. Right now, as far as I know, it's Lynn Delano, she's the chair, Dennis Stout, Tom Stahlberg, and Betsy Hollingsworth. They're the four board members the last time that I checked. There are at least a dozen other staff members that work for the ISRB. We need to find out everything about anyone who works there. Some, a, a couple questions to get you started would be how much do they get paid? How long have they worked there? What else have they done before they worked there? Are they crime victims? How many cars are in the agency's motor pool? They do have a motor pool with a lot of cars. Exactly how many people are in their caseload? Do they get paid per person? or offender that's under the ISRB. The policy states that offenders who are under the ISRB will be subject to polygraph testing, psychological evaluations, and the use of certain instruments. The key word I want to point your attention to is the word instruments. And that's another way that they sneak something in there. The instrument is, and I may be pronouncing this wrong, a plethogram. But if you look it up on the internet, it's available for everybody to see. It's a device that you hook your penis up to to see if you are erect when they show you certain pictures and videos. Why would anyone take a plea deal and agree to that? There are lots of policies surrounding the ISRB and other things I have mentioned. I hope when people hear what I have said, they look into these things and fix this problem. I'm proud to say that I'm a Marine and I fought in Iraq as a machine gunner in 2003. I gave four years of my life to protect America and our rights. Giving people life sentences without explaining all the things that surround it in its entirety, the ISRB and everything involved with it, is unconstitutional. It's unfair and it's un-American. I hope this problem gets solved quickly. I can be emailed via Facebook or at the email we have set up for this problem. There is also a web group on Yahoo, lifewithoutknowing at yahoo.com is the email address. Jay, go ahead and record this too. Uh, my Facebook, you can get that from my mom. The Yahoo group, the Yahoo address, my address, you should put that on there, is Christopher Reed 324543. The second line would be H5A77L. The third line would be 191 Constantine Way and Aberdeen, Washington 98520. And the policy found, all the policies I've talked about here can be found on the Washington State Legislator's website or at www.srb.com. That's it, bud.